fiscal year 2020 recommendations. So that um, results in a $25 million increase for, increase for IMLS uh, for a total of $267 million that goes to other state grant programs and other areas. Um, there's a House Bill 1637 about immigration status, which keeps the responsibility for federal immigration status enforcement under its appropriate jurisdiction, not local units of government. So we don't have to put that on our agenda. And the de defeat of all proposed property tax freeze bills. That can be good or bad. The bill ILA supported uh, makes consistent qualifications for serving as a library trustee across district or municipal libraries. That's something brand new. And there was a Senate Bill 1149 passed the Senate unanimously and had an amendment added to the House to exempt the Chicago Public Library from that. I don't know why, but that's Maybe pretty much it for the state. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Policy committee met June 3rd at 1 o'clock. Those present were Trustee McDonald, Rogers, Wolf, and Trustee Barshi. Uh, notice was posted. Basically, what uh, Anthony shared with us, a tentative uh, schedule prototype and a different style to make it look more organized. But what was decided was there is a lot to go over, and so we will be meeting July 2nd from 11 to 12.30, and a notice will go out, and I'll list who's on the policy committee. And those areas that we are going to focus on are just the duties of the trustee, and trustee, and uh, I keep making you a trustee, but you're not. <laughs> And so what we'll focus on are the duties of the library, but also Anthony had put together appendices that to supplement as well as look at sort of, what would I say? You can say it in terms of kind of consolidating the roles, but I think it's something that that committee needs to look at a little bit more in depth because some of it's duplicative and we need to make sure which way is the best way to say it. Right. So that's what we'll be focusing on, and we'll send out. And it's Appendix CX, Appendix 2B, 2C, and 2A. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the only other action is that what the, the way the, the committee will work is they will lump items together under a different area and then bring it before the board as opposed to bringing each thing piecemeal. Mm -hmm. And all are welcome to the committee meeting. And that moves me right on to the next in terms of committee assignments. The standing committees are facilities, equipment, finance, and policy. Uh, Trustee Wolf will be uh, the chair of facilities and equipment with Trustees Varshis, Rogers, and Fishman serving on that. Finance will be Trustee Rogers as well as Treasurer, with Trustees Johnson, Riddle, and Wolf serving on that. And policy is McDonald uh, Chair with Barshis, Rogers, and Wolf serving on that. Then there are um, special committees, and that's the audit, Trustee Fishman and Riddle, and Intergovernment Coordinating Committee. And what that is is I serve on that, and then one other trustee that's interested and that's just an annual breakfast that one of the governmental bodies serve has, and they tell what's going on at the thing. Then you've got the Advocacy and Partners Committee, and that has changed. It used to be uh, ILA and Rails, and mm -hmm. so it has been expanded, and Johnson will be serving as chair. Barshis and Fishman will be trust trustees on the committee. And how it has changed probably one of the only, it's the only one that really has changed, is that it will inform and encourage trustee support of appropriate library legislation, advances the strategic plan as it relates to collaboration with other units of government and supporting our community engagement, cooperates with reaching across Illinois' library system rails, 
and have representative attendance at all rails board meetings whenever possible, and then informs board of ILA issues impacting WPL, which includes possible changes in legislation, innovative practices, and new library services. Nominating is only uh, when we get new people elected, so every two years. And we eliminated the communications committee because basically advocacy and partners committee can serve that role if there's something that they want to rally the trustees to write about or to get behind. Okay. And details are in the binder and will be on the website. And thank you all for agreeing and it's generally a two year term. If you're not part of the committee, are you able to Everybody is okay. invited yep. to the committee. And are you able to vote? No, you vote at the board meeting. Only those committee members vote at the committee meeting, and then they present it to the board, at which time the board votes on what the committee is uh, proposing. Okay. And so with, like, for example, a one, two, three, four person um, And I serve on all of them. You serve on all of them. I serve and on you all vote on all of and them. And I vote on all of them. So with a four person, like, or for example, like a special committee. Mm hmm. What is quorum then if, out of three people? Two? Quorum would yep. be two yes. out of four Majority people. Of quorum. Right. Yeah, whatever three. The, yeah. Well, like with the special committees, it would be the advocacy and partners committee. I don't know. They might, they would do recommendations. I don't, nominating would recommend the slate, but like the audit just sort of inspects it and signs off on it and brings it to make sure everything's intact. And Cynthia sort of coordinates that to make sure all the attachments and all the documents are signed. The intergovernmental coordinated, you just show up. No, sure. And I'm just saying they're small committees. So okay. if two people, especially this summer, like at the mm -hmm. finance committee, I think there was only two. Two members, right? Present? Three. Three. At the finance committee meeting? Yeah. Um, who was the third? Well, Lisa, Lisa. or me. Wasn't I there? At the finance committee meeting? Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, yeah. I yeah there was just you and... Lisa oh, has sorry. a... Well, Lisa is also a voting member of the finance. Okay, I see. So, quorum is... Okay. I didn't think we reached quorum. I, I thought that if they're, if you're not able to reach quorum, do you reschedule? Does, no, I don't think... Do committees need to have a quorum? Yes. Okay. A quorum of the committee. Okay. And so if it's a three-member committee and two members are present, you hold your meeting. For sure. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. But we had we had other trustees att attending as I, well. I didn't. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Okay. I didn't. I'm sorry. I missed you. <laughs> <laughs> and and generally, a schedule is sent out to those that are on the committee to see what times they are available, and then that's when the committee meeting is set. I see. In terms mm -hmm. of to make sure you've got that quorum. But I guess think things happen because a lot and of you're them, allowed to reply all to those because that's not library business when you're scheduled. <laughs> The email. Well, well that's, no, you're not replying to all, you're just replying you're to You're not person. conducting business, right. you're right. scheduling yeah, meetings. Right. So that's okay. Right. But that's you, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I never reply to all on those, I just reply to the person sending it, so that way it's only going back to one person Thank again, you. as we discussed. I mean, scheduling is not. Correct. But just scheduling, but, yeah. I sent you all the evaluation. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, not. Right, right. right. But rather that's than just, reply to all, if you just reply to whoever sent the, initiated the email, then sure. you're definitely not going to be in breach of, of, of that. So. And if. If there's a committee you want to be on, just let me know. It gets spread pretty thin, so we want to make sure, yeah. mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons I got rid of communications, because, yeah. yeah. And that was usurping, I think, some of the staff's role anyway. Good idea. Okay. Do you Thank have you. anything? Hello, it's now time. Finance, uh, community. We've done everything that finance could have been. Yeah, Okay. No, we got new business. Information items? You can read them. <laughs> <laughs> I have a handout for you regarding our, our item of new business. Are we at that portion of the meeting? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, oh you don't yeah. announce the information items out loud? I don't know if you right. Well, ILA conference has already been announced, communications. Sunday hours. Uh, comments from suggestion boxes are being passed. The Illinois Public Library Report, Independence Day, closed due. Thank you, Regis. Mm -hmm. This Sunday hours will be starting this, this Sunday. This, this last Sunday? They said it already started. Wait. 
16th. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're 20th. Oops, yeah. Kind of 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Are we ready? Are there, well, are there any questions about the information items that you all have had a chance to peruse? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the item of new business that's before you this evening is something that came up at the Kenilworth Public Library District meeting um, last Thursday, June 13th. Um, at that board meeting, Kenilworth resident and Eagle Scout candidate Luke Davidson, who's the son of one of the former trustees, Jen Davidson, um, he presented a verbal proposal for a book drop um, to service the residents of Kenilworth. Um, that would effectively be the first physical structure in Kenilworth that would represent a library. Um, he has worked already in coordination with a number of stakeholders, including the Kenilworth Park District, to secure a space for this book drop. And his proposed location for that was along the Green Bay Bike Trail in Townley Field, just a block north of the uh, metro station on the east side of the tracks. Um, and it's just a little bit of a distance at the end of the Richmond Road cul-de-sac. Um, he has already coordinated um, to fully fund and provision the installation of the book drop, including a concrete pad um, on which the uh, book drop will be mounted. Um, the book drop is also um, slated to memorialize a resident and um, library advocate, Catherine White Radler. Um, there was an article about Catherine White Radler in last week's Beacon. Um, and there was also an article, and I just promptly lost the page that this was on. That's great. Thanks um, to the Beacon. <laughs> um, yeah, yay, yay Beacon. Yay. Um, there was an article about Catherine Radler here um, in memoriam. And then on the opposite page, there was an article about the Boy Scouts celebrating 100 years in Kenilworth. So quite timely um, that this proposal would come forward um, that same day that that article mm -hmm. made it into the paper. Um, so this was the first opportunity that I learned about um, this proposal. Um, as I think for some, the, uh, the coordination of the Kenilworth Library District is, is maybe unclear, as they don't have a structure, um, as they have a library services agreement where Wilmette Library is serving in, in that capacity. So um, I think the Eagle Scout was not really aware that the library, Wilmette Library might be the one servicing that and kind of missed the opportunity to engage us as a stakeholder. Um, so when I saw the site where this was proposed to go, and, and there's a map that's attached to your document, um, and I can, I can point you to some more details in that in a second here. Um, I had some immediate concerns. Um, for most of all, I, I think the visibility of, of the book drop is, um, is secluded. It's along a bike path um, in the middle of this field. It's a, a good distance away from the end of that cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. which is not very well trafficked. Um, and I just, I think that if we're going to be providing a book drop service for that community, it needs to be in a location where it would be um, really noticeable. Yeah. I also have concerns about the accessibility of the drop. Um, it's not immediately accessible to all users in that location. Um, and it also, from a logistical standpoint, is not really accessible for our team that would be maintaining the box and emptying it on a, on a daily basis. Uh, there's also some ongoing maintenance issues that I think we need to consider uh, before we actually settle on the location. Um, however, uh, the Kenilworth Public Library District Board and I agreed that this is an awesome proposal and um, that we think that it would communicate great value to that community and um, we would support it. The Kenilworth Public Library District's budget does have the ability to sustain the ongoing costs um, if they were to contract service with Wilmette Library for the provision of that service. Um, right now, Kenilworth does use uh, the Plaza del Lago box, which is adjacent to Kenilworth there in the mm -hmm. north part of our district. Um, and they also take advantage of the Wilmette Library and Winnetka Northfield Library's um, boxes where they contract their service. So since this is kind of an unprecedented agreement that we would have, um, we had to consider what the ongoing cost would be for a service like this if we bring forward a proposal. So what I've got for you on at the bottom of this page is the logic that I would have behind how we would service such a box. Um, so the distance between Wilmette Library and the downtown area of Kenilworth is approximately one mile. So if we were gonna make a complete trip to go there and back, I'd estimate that that's about two miles. Um, the federal uh, reimbursement mileage rate for a vehicle um, for business purposes is 58 cents a mile in 2019. All right, so the mileage rate for one round trip would be $1.16. 
Um, we have currently three employees that use their personal vehicles to collect materials from our remote drop boxes at the rec center, um, at Plaza del Lago, and hopefully someday at the Linden Station. <laughs> um, I will say that I, they were voting on that this afternoon. Um, I just got word from legal at CTA that they were voting on it, so um, they're going to let me know ASAP. They went to the board? It, I do believe, oh I do believe so. I know. It's, it's been a long haul, oh y'all, oh, yeah. um, but we're getting there. Um, I did oh, counter, I did sign my fifth version of that MOU um, oh my, recently, oh and hopefully it gets countersigned soon. The board? Seriously, the board? I do believe so. <laughs> That's what I'm told. I believe it. Anyway, back to this. So we have three staff members that um, collect our current remote drop boxes, and their their average hourly salary is uh, twenty five fifty. We estimate that the round trip um, for them to to go out drive there, come back, and uh, while they're at the site to collect all the materials and replace the box and so on, would take approximately 30 minutes. All right, so the labor rate for one round trip would be $12.75. All right, so then um, the remote book drops are emptied and maintained on a daily basis for every, every day that the library is open. We are closed two day, 12 days each year for holidays, and so therefore the library is open 353 days 